All right, this is Grade 3, Module 3, Lesson 1. We're going to be talking about multiplication for the next uh, several videos. Uh, in this case, we're going to be specifically talking about com you know, the commutative property with multiplication. The idea being, uh, this model right here is saying three groups of six, because you have six, and then another six, and then another six. So the idea would be we would we would... Uh, represent that with 3 times 6, as in 3 groups of 6, traditionally. Um, and then there are other cultures that would represent this 6 times 3, but in, in the United States, we're going to model this as 3 times 6. And then similarly, right here, this, you have 3, then 3, then 3, then 3, then 3, then 3, so you have 6 groups of Three. And in both cases, of course, the answer is 18. So the idea is we're going to use this fact, you know, this concept of this, to help us uh, understand that if a student knows 3 times 6, then she also knows 6 times 3. Now, in the previous slide, I was showing you tape diagrams. Here, we're going to do the same thing with arrays. And so our Traditionally, it really doesn't matter. That's the whole beauty of the commutative property. But traditionally, uh, we have four rows, and each row has six. So traditionally, we would label this as four rows of six, as in four times six is 24, uh, which means we could also write that as 24 is equal to six times four. And what we might say for six times four for this array 6 stands for the fact that we have six array uh, six columns. So we might call this, you know, 6 times 4 might be, oh, 6 columns of 4, whereas 4 times 6, this, oops, I didn't want to do it. Oh, well, <laughs> I didn't want to circle it. Anyway, <laughs> 4 times 6 means uh, we have 4 rows of 6. All right. Uh, let's do this next one, this next array right here. So we have three rows, so I'm going to label that with a three. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight columns. So we have three rows with eight in each column. So traditionally, we would probably begin by writing that as three rows of eight, or three times eight. And that equals 24. And then, of course, we want to use the commutative property, and we would say 8 times 3 is 24. Now, if we wanted to, it doesn't say, uh, but if we wanted to take, oh, let's do this one, and we wanted to record that as a tape diagram. I'm just doing this. It doesn't ask us to. But this is essentially saying four groups of 6. And so what that might look like would be four groups of 6. And then this would be the 24. And that's what the tape diagram would look like. And similarly, if we wanted to do um, what this one looks like, that says three groups of 8. Uh, so the uh, like a typical tape diagram would look like three groups of 8 equals 24. Um, I didn't draw the little bars here. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It doesn't matter. And our last slide for this video is, I just, it, this isn't really complicated math, but I, I kind of thought the reason I included it was this is fairly unique to Engage New York, these phrases of five twos or two sixes. And I thought, well, parents might not exactly understand and teachers might not exactly understand, so I thought I would um, work on that. So our first, we, we're going to begin with two sixes. Well, two sixes is going to be the same as six twos. Because basically, I'm going to draw this um, down here. Two sixes looks like this. And that's 12. And so we want students to understand that two sixes and six twos both equal 12. And, and so that's where that's coming from. So I'm going to zip through these. So B 
Hmm. If we see that we're supposed to have six threes, that means it's going to be three times six. Um, I, you know, traditionally, I think I would have, I would have written this as six times three, uh, but we're just practicing that that commutative property, and we want kids to be flexible to understand that three sixes and six threes is the same thing, and of course that answer is eighteen, and now this is saying four times eight, right here, four times eight. What so what's missing right here? That of course is an eight, and the answer is thirty-two. And let's keep going. Oh my goodness, way over here, we're seeing some blank spaces, but we do see that the answer is 28, so we know that the missing value is 7. So 4 times 7 is equal to 7 times 4, and that's 28. And then this one is very unique to Common Core, so teachers, parents, uh, this is going to be a little un uh, unfamiliar to you, don't worry. So we've got five twos, and we've got two twos and we're adding those together. So five twos plus two twos is equal to seven twos, seven times two, and that is equal to 14. All right. And then if you want to, we can, we can model that. Five twos is two plus two plus two plus two plus two, and then two twos is two more, and so all together we've got seven twos, which is 14. And similarly, we've got right here, we're told 6 times 5 is one of our answers. Now, if we wanted to, we could just jump in and put 30, because we know that part. Now, the idea would be, what it goes in this missing blank? Well, we have 1 5, plus we have an unknown number of 5s. But we can see altogether, we're supposed to have 6 5s. So that means this missing place right here, 5 5s. So we end up with 5 5s plus 1 5 is equal to 6 fives, And that answer is, of course, 30. And that is Grade 3, Module 3, Lesson 1, using the commutative property to know our facts.